If you love tiaras, jewelry, diamonds, gemstones of all shapes, sizes, colors, today is the day for you. We're gonna be doing Tiara Tuesday every other week. It's going to be a fantastic time. And today we are talking about the white whale of tiara watching. I'm talking about the Stuart tiara. And this tiara was hidden in the vaults for about 40 years. Like literally until 2018, we hadn't even seen a color picture of it. That's how hidden that this tiara was. Uh, and it wasn't until 2018 that we finally saw it again. And it's really a completely unique piece that you can't find really anywhere else. And it has a history that's absolutely insane. So we'll be going over that today. So just to kind of give you guys an overview, you know, every every royal house and even the houses that are kind of defunct, most of them have a tiara of some sort or another or aristocratic houses as well. And some of these, most of the time, you know, for smaller families, usually they're smaller tiaras. Uh, but when you get into like, kind of the big ruling families, there are kind of a couple of different levels. You have the small ones, the medium ones, and then we call them the big guns. So these are the big tiaras that really basically only the queen wears. And so they're kind of a huge deal. And when you see them, you don't always see them often because they're heavy. I was thinking about if any any business wanted to sponsor this video, Excedrin, I would love to have you because I'm sure they keep Excedrin on like tap in some of these places when these ladies wear all their tiaras because they're heavy and they hurt sometimes. And so when it comes to the Dutch royal family, so this is the Netherlands, they have probably second to the British, the most impressive tiara collection. And nothing really beats the house diamonds or the Stuart Pardue. And this is a collection, it is a tiara, it is a necklace, and it is a huge flower brooch, all completely in diamonds. And perhaps the most impressive is the one at the top. And the Stuart Tiara has a couple of different settings, but the biggest one, the granddaddy of them all, has a diamond that is about 40 carats, and it's a light blue, light green, diamond and it is a rough cut and it has been around literally since 1690. So uh, let me just give you a little bit of history of this tiara. So the Stuart diamond was originally kind of discovered in uh, the late 1600s and it was purchased by King William of Orange and his wife Mary. And so they were part of the Stuart household and they had connections to Holland in addition to connections to the UK. And so King William of Orange came over um, because if you didn't know, I explained this in another video, but actually uh, the Netherlands is called the Kingdom of Orange. So that's why anytime you see the Dutch at a, a, a sporting event, they're all wearing orange, which seems like really weird until you understand they're the Kingdom of Orange and everything is orange. So uh, it kind of gives them a unique spin because their colors for your, their flag are red, white, and blue as it as with every other country on planet Earth, pretty much. And so it kind of gives them a way to differentiate themselves. But anyway, so King William and Queen Mary um, purchased this diamond. It was a rough cut at the time. And they were advised to actually split it into two. But Queen Mary was like, nah, I think I want it as one diamond. So when cut, it was 39 0.75 carats and that is a very big diamond but it's not flawless the british royal family has the largest flawless diamond in the entire world they actually received the largest it was actually 3106 carats when it was originally purchased it's called the cullinan diamond and it was split into several different ones the biggest one is in the scepter and so but this because it has this light blue kind of almost sea greenish tinge to it it makes this diamond incredibly valuable. This diamond obviously started out its life in the UK, but because um, it had connections to the Netherlands through the Stuart line and um, King William of Orange, it actually ended up coming back to the Netherlands when the couple died in 1702 because they didn't have any children. And so, but the Queen's sister actually attempted to sue to get it back, which I totally get. She lost the lawsuit. So since then, it's been in the family of the Dutch monarchy and it's gone through, it has been a a necklace and kind of a brooch and so it's been a couple of different things but it wasn't until kind of the late 1800s that it got its current shape so in 1897 Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands decided to put this diamond in a tiara 
And so tiaras were kind of all the rage at the time. And the Stuart tiara, you know, the house diamonds, it is a humongous set. It's, it, it's the big guns. It's gigantic. It's probably, you know, six or eight inches high. It's a huge, huge tiara. And so she decided to put it in there to kind of make a statement. And then she had uh, the matching necklace and this kind of bow brooch covered, covered in diamonds. And so re that really became the place where it sat. And so there's a lot of pictures. One of the queens especially loved to wear it. And she wore this tiara quite frequently. And it didn't seem to bother her at all. Um, queen Juliana wore it several times. But the latest queen, uh, Prince, who is now Princess Beatrix, so she abdicated of her own volition. It's kind of a, a tradition now in the Netherlands to advocate at a certain age so you can kind of enjoy a bit of your retirement and then you become a princess again. And so Queen Beatrix, she abdicated in, in for her son. And so King Wilhelm Alexander and his wife, Queen Maxima, started to rule. And so Queen Princess Beatrix, apparently, she really struggled with some of the heavier pieces. The Dutch collection is beautiful. They have this beautiful sapphire and diamond tiara. And Queen Beatrix uh, hardly ever wore it. You had the Wittenberg pearl tiara. I mean, the Dutch collection is really one of a kind. And especially Queen Maxima, she's really, really great at using different pieces in different ways, which is just so, so fun. Because you don't always, Queen E, as much as we all love Queen Elizabeth II, she is kind of boring in some of her jewelry choices. And she also has a reputation for not being the best when it comes to um, kind of picking out tiara designs. One of her, the aquamarine one, and there's another one that's, you know, kind of universally regaled as ugh. And so, but Queen, Princess Beatrix just didn't enjoy wearing the really heavy pieces. They gave her a headache. But Queen Maxima, and that's not so much a problem. And so um, we first saw the Stuart tiara at a um, event, I believe it was either in 2016 or 2017. So this was a Luxembourg state visit after they had become king and queen in 2014, I believe, 2014. Um, and so she wore a lower version of this tiara, which I don't think we had really seen before. Again, because especially, you know, the last time this tiara was really seen was like in the seventies, late sixties, you know, a lot of, we don't, we didn't get as many pictures then as we do now. There's not constant photographs and videos and all these different things. And so there, you can kind of see a peak of it in Queen Marguerite's wedding when she got married way back in the sixties. You can see a bit of this tiara. It's in black and white. I'll show you the little clip, what I think is the Stuart in the background. And so you just really don't see, you didn't see it much. So we didn't know really that there was this second lower setting and you kind of look at it and I'll just show you a brief video. Oh my goodness, is it a gorgeous piece? It's just, you know, just even the lower setting is just incredible. And then when they had the Argentina state visit, Queen Maxima chose one of, I think also one of the most gorgeous pieces in the Dutch collection as a tiara, which is the rose bandeau. And it's just literally huge diamonds. That's literally all it is. And it's, it's not tall or anything, but it's just super lovely. And she wore for the first time the Stuart, part of the Stuart part of the necklace. And so we saw that and it's like, oh my gosh, Queen Maxima. We were like, I'll wait it on bated breath. Cause like the Stuart tiara, it's the white whale of tiaras besides the Strathmore Rose. It's the white whale. Everybody wanted to see it. And in 2018, Queen Maxima, of course, did not disappoint. And she hardly ever disappoints when it comes to big gala events, going big or going home. She almost always brings it. And so she brought out the full Stuart tiara for the first time and she wore the bow brooch as well. And so this tiara, you can see some of the images here. I wish we had like close-ups of it. I wish we could like get real detailed and close of it to really get a sense. You can get a, you can see a smidge of that color. That's part of that, that diamond, that Stuart diamond, but it is very, very light. So it's kind of hard to see, but it's really a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. And I feel like she wears it so, so well. Well, it's really, really incredible. And so see that again was just lovely. And so she brought it out in part because of its history and connection to the UK. And in this short little video clip, I'll show you guys here. She answers the age old questions. Did this give you a headache? So watch and see her response. Diamanten naar boven zijn gekomen de afgelopen jaren. Zijn er steeds meer uh, uit de kluis gekomen, zoals ze dat zeggen dan. Um, Kiste dan het sluitstuk. Wat was de reden daarvoor de, om de Stuart Diamant te dragen? Ja, de Stuart Diamant was in 1690 gekocht uh, door Mary Stuart. 
En um, dus is een van onze relaties, heel uh, oude relaties tussen Nederland en de Verenigde Koninkrijk. Dus we dachten dat het een goede moment is om uh, weer de Stuart de Mand en de uh, Diadeem echt uh, ja, te dragen deze keer. En we hopen dat we in de toekomst uh, zullen dragen vaker. En, uh, ik, we hebben het hier gisteren met heel veel trots gedaan en uh, ja, met zoveel betekenis natuurlijk voor ons wederlanden. Geen hoofdpijn? Nee. <laughs> Gelukkig. All right guys, I'll have Queen Maxima, you know, asked, did it give you a headache? No. Because <laughs> I mean, I, I would, I would, you know, I, this, this, if I wore this headband forever, it would give me a headache. Like if I wore it all day, it probably would give me a headache, but I would, I would live with the headache to wear that tiara. And so, um, you just look out of love Queen Maxima that she brings out these really historic pieces. She's also brought out some tiaras that we hadn't seen in a long time, the peacock one and the peacock necklace. We hadn't seen those often. And so she really does a great job of kind of bringing out kind of the old styles and mixing it up. The Swedes are great with that as well. Cause they have, um, I would say they're, their collection is like, so the first is the Brits, the second is the Dutch, the third I would say is the Swedes. And they have three, well, four royal ladies now. And so they're really great at kind of having fun playing with their hair. The Swedes are known for great tiara hair. And so it's just great to see that this tiara come out of the vault, the Stuart. It's been so, so long. It's again, a completely gorgeous piece, completely unique. And when it comes to the big guns, I would say, you know, besides the British collection, it's the biggest of the big guns. You have the nine prong in Sweden and you have the, oh, it's it's Brazilian something. I can't remember the exact name of it. The Bazaria or something. Um, it is quite big, but when it comes to diamonds with, mm, the Stuart is is beyond. It is such the Stuart diamond is just unique. You don't see that a lot in and in, in you know basically any jewel houses. And that's what makes I think royal watching so so fun is that you get to see these jewels that you just wouldn't see anywhere else because they've stood the test of time. They've been within the same family for generations upon generations. And that is really reflected in the Dutch. I hope one day that they actually put it on a display. It would be great to see some of these vault pieces displayed for people to kind of enjoy and see up close. Obviously they had the big um, break in in the Dresden vault a couple of years ago. So I think they're kind of, they're kind of hesitant about that. I'm sure with some of these very, very valuable pieces, but the historic connection of the Stuart diamond and tiara and um, just the history of the Kingdom of Orange is great to see. So it was lovely to see Queen Maxima in that tiara. Um, and so let me know if you like this video. Let me know what other tiaras you would like to know more about. I don't know if I gave you guys a ton of information about it because sometimes some of these things we know a lot because they've shared, but sometimes these things kind of stay within kind of the vault. And so um, the family kind of knows some of these things, but we don't always, but we do know it was purchased in 1690. Think about that for a minute, 1690. That's when that diamond was purchased and it's still, we can still see it today and enjoy it today. So I hope you guys like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't before and I would love to have you back and I hope to see you again very, very soon. We have a ton of content planned. I'm filming all the time and so um, get ready for new content later this week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.